Spiritual Teaching 249 Love Each Other 1. Beloved people, here is the word among you, the same one who spoke to you in the second era, and who is manifesting today spiritually through the understanding of man. 2. Truly I tell you, the existence of Jesus among men was not sweet. From my childhood the chalice came to my lips of bitterness. But to that I came, to suffer from beginning to end, to show you the way of redemption and teach you that if I, the owner of life, peace and happiness, I renounced my glory to suffer for you on earth, what can you have to do? What can you expect from the joys, pleasures, and victories of your life on earth? 3. The Christian world still commemorates the day that Jesus came into the world, but even on the days of commemoration the din of war, and men are killed. Women are left homeless and children orphaned, while Mary, the mother, spreads the mantle of her love over the universe. She is tenderness, warmth, the eternal lap, home, most perfect mother of Jesus as man. He also delivered his divine lesson that began in the manger of the stable and concluded on the cross of Calvary. For peace be with men of good will who love, bless and watch over humanity. 5. My creatures that you come to find me without asking me for anything, hoping only what my will is to grant you. When you feel my love and my caresses, you receive them with deep love, you are entrusting me with your thoughts and you tell me that you long to perfect yourselves. 6. You are like the birds that go after the nest where they take shelter. You have approached each other in search of warmth, and my word has fed you and satisfied your heart. 7. On this day you come to present your works to me. You leave behind you tears and sufferings, and you have the hope that the new year brings the long-awaited peace for humanity. 8. You thank me for having found me after having suffered misunderstanding and disappointments and feeling loved for me. You raise a song of gratitude. 9. You are discovering the treasure, the inheritance that you were looking for and when penetrating your spirit, you have marveled at the finding of your gifts, contemplating virtues that were hidden and forgotten. 10. You have found in me the love you had sought, the true master, the loyal friend, all the noble fibers of your spirit and you feel the desire to tell humanity that my spirit is vibrating above all being, that my light has become a word to be heard by all and that the instrument I have chosen is man, the one who has made by my will the spokesman of my teaching. If when the good news reaches men through you, you are heard, rejoice. If they do not hear you, do not fear that I will manifest myself in many ways to overcome human reluctance. 11. In the second era I said to my disciples, I will return and speak to the spirit of man when it has known sin at its greatest height. But I warned them in what way I had to return, spiritually, and here you have me keeping my promise. Those disciples asked me, how will we recognize you? And I made known to them the signs of my coming. But you see that although they are not on earth those apostles, you whom I have chosen at this time to deliver my teaching to you, have recognized my voice. 12. When I arrived at Calvary and drained my chalice, many of those who are now hearing me speak through the conduit of man, they did not understand who was the one who was speaking to them and those are you that you despised my teaching and that now you tell me, Master, we love you, we want to follow you. If in another time we did not recognize you, now we understand our mistake and ask your forgiveness. Let us follow your steps closely. 13. And I say to you, O oh, disciples, you have opened your hearts and let my word, like a fertile seed germinate, grow and be fruitful. Allow this teaching to leave its benefits in you and that these be for all your brothers. 14. The time is coming when the human spirit seeks the truth. By then my seed will be scattered over all the face of the earth and everywhere apostles will arise. 15. Prepare today, be patient in the fight. All your sufferings will be rewarded. Feel my caress and my forgiveness that they come to soften your sorrows. In this way you are purifying yourselves to come clean to me, and when you speak like this you feel the peace and calm your heart. 16. Leave your sadness, do not look for me on the path of pain, Come to the Father, I am love. 17. I want to see you strong, patiently carrying your cross and scattering gifts as you go. 
watch over each of your works so that you may always be worthy of the peace that I offer you. 18. Multitudes, my children who come in search of light, you wait for my words, you wait for my thoughts in order to forget your bitterness. 19. Here you have gathered and you have found my light in the essence of my teaching. When you talk to each other, you have understood that it was the same cause that made you all look for me in this word and that that cause was a real thirst, the thirst for love. 20. Very little is what I had to give you, people, because everything that you have come to ask me, you already carried in your spirit. I have only had to teach you to look towards the eternal of your being, so that there you discover your heritage and your wealth. 21. Only my light opens the eyes of the spirit to the truth, only it illuminates the endless path of true wisdom, the path of your redemption. 22. The more you search on that path, the more you will find. The deeper you go, the more treasures you will find. Treasures that were hidden but that exist in your spirit and in the life to which he belongs. 23. How many riches you had forgotten and how many new wonders you will find on this path. 24. You have a lot to learn to become sensitive to my inspirations and my calls. How many times do you perceive vibrations of the spiritual without being able to understand who is calling you? That language is so confusing for you that you manage to understand, you end up attributing spiritual manifestations or hallucinations or material causes. 25. Hard are your hearts and foolish your understandings that do not allow the spirit to receive the influence of its true abode. The people of God were not like that in the early days. Spirituality was cultivated by those men of simple heart and high spirit who were concerned with the fulfillment of the divine law and the observance of the laws of the earth. 26. I want to be felt and loved again as in that time, but in a more spiritual way. 27. This was announced by prophets, by my word and by one of my apostles. If you really could unite all those revelations in one, you would be amazed at the clarity with which they speak to you of this time that you are living and the manifestations that you are contemplating. 28. My communication will be brief through human understanding, because if it were to last, you would remain parked, you would only devote yourselves to enjoying my word and you would end up acquainting yourselves with my presence. Soon my manifestation in this form will end and then you will be forced to study what you heard, to perfect your prayer to feel my presence and to better prepare you to make yourselves worthy of my prodigies. 29. Two mistakes I want you to avoid that you stagnate in the routine of your practices and that you try to walk quickly. Go step by step, firmly to the goal that I set for you. Thus you will go ascending, cleaning the stains of your spirit and paying off debts you will get closer to eternal life, destined as a shelter for all spirits when they reach perfect condition. 30. Hearing me, oh my toddlers, some of you pray for my forgiveness, others cry. I see tears of love, of regret, of fear, I receive everything. See in how many ways you are heard by your master, who knows how to interpret all idioms. 31. When you are listening to me, you would not want this hour to pass. How much peace, what tranquility, what infinite sweetness, your spirit tells me. But I tell you, this peace, this sweetness, this happiness of feeling, loving, knowing and being able, you will have in spiritual life, not for an hour, but for all eternity. 32. I will wait for you in that promised land and my light will follow you on your journey until you come to me, because I am the light that descends to illuminate your path. 33. In my word I have given you prophecies that you have seen fulfilled, so that you may share in your faith those who listen to your testimony. What joy will there be in those who, living dead to faith, suddenly open their eyes and discover about eternal life and within them, the resemblance to the same divinity. In that instant, existence will change for those beings, as they will cease to be those who ask, rather to be those who give thanks. Because he who asks is because he has not recognized that he has enough, and the one who gives thanks is the one who is convinced that he has more than he deserves. 34. When you contemplate the wonders of nature and you realize that you have been the object of love and divine charity, has not a thanksgiving flowed from your heart? What greater proof of gratitude can you give me in that moment 
than your admiration, your humility, and your confession of my greatness? It has not been then nor the pain, neither need nor interest, those who have exalted your love for me. 35. When you pray a prayer of gratitude, accompany it with works that confirm that feeling. 36. I must remove all confusion from you, because the time in which I speak to you in this way is already very short and at the end of 1950, you will recognize in you a greater understanding of my work, because you will have studied my teaching more thoroughly, helped by the wise advice of my spiritual world. These spokespersons, to whom the mission to transmit the divine message, each time they will prepare with greater knowledge of their responsibility. 37. By the time I raise my word, there will be purification of practices and customs among all of you. So, whoever wants to follow me with the flag of truth must rise and follow me, and whoever out of selfishness or interest persists in falsifying what is pure, he will be subject to suffer the consequences of his disobedience and lack of zeal. 38. I will not be the one who punishes the son. He himself will dictate his sentence. All weeds will be cut by the roots. 39. I have liberated the spiritualist people, I have illuminated their fields and I have removed the barriers and obstacles, but for so many benefits you also have great responsibilities. Watch so that you can clearly hear the voice of your consciousness, which will tell you what you should do and will give you the alert voice at every moment. 40. This year, which has been one of preparation for you, because you have fought to break the chains that bound you to a fanaticism that impeded your spiritual development, you had the great will to strip yourself of many prejudices. From that moment you feel freer and closer to the truth. Now you will feel stronger for the fight. 41. How many events will happen? How many small worlds that man has created will be destroyed? Truly I tell you, that all false greatness and all selfish work will be annihilated. 42. Few of you have understood my teaching, but when the time comes for my departure, I will leave my disciples with the knowledge and strength to face the fight, because the Master is forgiving with you, because I see your effort, that although small, it is worthy and I receive it. You have the conviction that you are working for the Spirit, that what you sow now with bitterness, tomorrow will bear sweet fruits. Who knowing this, dare to waste your time. 43. You will soon see that my doctrine will be made known in different languages. So my word, my teaching, it will put you in communication with men from distant regions, and even if you have never looked at each other, you will recognize each other. Even if there is land and seas in between, you will be united and identified by my work. 44. When the year 1950 ends, there will be uncertainty and doubt in many of you. Why do some who enjoy greater intelligence than those who believe in my communication doubt my manifestations? Because it is not knowledge nor is it the mind that can judge my truth, and when man understands it, he allows himself to be invaded by a fear towards everything new, towards everything that he considers unknown, to reject it unconsciously. And you, the weak, the unprepared, those who cannot reach the level of men recognized for their intelligence, you are those who believe, those who have faith and know how to delve into the mysteries of the spiritual. Why? Because it is the Spirit, the One that reveals to the mind eternal life and its wonders. 45. Human intelligence represents a force with which you are going to fight, because through it, man has forged ideas and concepts of the spiritual, which have not been revealed to him by the Spirit. 46. For that fight you will be strong with a strength that will also come from the Spirit. Your strength will never rest in your flesh, neither in the power of money, nor in earthly supports. Only your faith in the truth that you carry will make you win in contention. 47. The world will tremble when my word is heard among the nations, because the Spirit of humanity, which is prepared for this revelation, will vibrate with joy and at the same time with fear. Then, whoever wants to know the truth, let him free himself from the slavery of his material ideas and recreate himself before the luminous horizons that come to your sight. But, whoever persists in his own will and in fighting against this light, remains at liberty to do so. 48. Conversion to spirituality will bring friendship and brotherhood among the nations, but it is necessary that you prepare yourself, because the contest will be great. If men rise up in wars, it is not because this is my will, 
but because they have not understood my law. 49. As spiritual evolution is subject to a just law, man finds purification in his path, in this way he does justice to himself before God. 50. This time has surprised humanity very far from the road. War, famine, plague, mourning and destruction. They are voices that speak of the lack of charity, spirituality and justice that prevail in the world. 51. Understand that I inspire you peace, I have never incited you to war. 52. In the midst of this chaos, I have come to teach you, separating you from the whirlwind of passions to reveal to you what in other times I promised you, to tell you that, although you are small and humble, your spiritual preparation and your faith, they will transform you into strong soldiers and self-sacrificing apostles of my work. 53. The world will feel my presence in you, will recognize my law today forgotten and will know the new revelations and teachings. Humanity will see me in all my splendor upon receiving the testimony of your works of love. 54. If your faith weakens in the face of great trials, you will not be able to inspire faith in your brothers, you will not be able to heal the sick, nor touch the heart of the sinner, nor comfort the sad. You will feel at times deprived of that power to illuminate the roads, to open doors to those in need. You will feel unworthy to hold the blind man's hand to guide him, and then your heart will cry bitterly. It will be when you pray with all your trust placed in me, and I will receive you, I will listen to you, I will give peace to your spirit, and I will light the lamp of your faith with the inextinguishable light of my love. 55. I have wanted to form with you a people, a family united in my law, that loves each other, where there is no bad will, so that you serve as an example to your brothers and sisters and be the foundation of my sanctuary. 56. I do not ask you for the impossible. I only want truth to exist in your works and words. If with humility and understanding you practice my teaching, if you know how to have virtue and simplicity in your life, you will not have to speak or make an effort to wake up the spirit of your brothers. The testimony of your charity will suffice. 57. You will not be the only ones in whom this responsibility rests. New crowds will come, new peasants and new soldiers with as much or greater zeal and love than you, those who will be able to take a step further in the path of evolution. 58. As I taught the twelve apostles of the second era to heal the sick, to love each other, to forgive offenses, to free the possessed and to resurrect the dead with words and works of love, I have also taught you, so that you may be the true apostles of my doctrine. 59. Quiet your mind, prepare your heart, because truly I tell you, that according to your preparation, so you will receive from my spirit and I can tell you. Here you have me fulfilling my promise that I would be with you again. 60. Talk to me in the most intimate part of your being, because I listen to your spiritual language. You make your vicissitudes present to me, but I also contemplate that you suffer when you see the suffering that mankind hurries like a chalice of bitterness at this time because the world has ignored me and fallen into the clutches of temptation and struggles in its darkness and sufferings. I approach full of humility to knock on the doors of every heart to give men consolation, peace, bread for their spirits, but humanity has forgotten me. It throws me away from itself because it has ignored me. Humanity cries its loneliness because I feel far away, because it has not heard this word that I am giving you, that is why I once again remind you of the sublime mission that you have to fulfill among humanity. 61. I have filled you with my power to awaken the spirits, to give my peace, to pray for those who do not know how to pray, so that feeling the pain of your brothers, you pray for them. You are the people whom I have awakened and whom I have graced so that you take the first steps of fulfillment full of love, brotherhood and forgiveness. Be the true disciples, those of you who study and practice the lesson that I have come to give you, because as my disciples I will leave you on earth. 62. People, among you are the unbelievers who are not satisfied with the essence of my word, those who do not feel a true faith in my spiritual manifestation, they seek me in materialism, in material chants and prayers, in rites and in the ceremonies, because even their spirits have not been strengthened in the truth and for this reason they are far from me. 63. I have taught you a lot, I have promised to dwell in the sanctuary that you prepare for me in your hearts, also those who practice a materialized worship, 
believe that I love them and that they can better fulfill their mission, and I tell them, I have given you clearly my teaching. Why are you still asleep? I have spoken a lot to you and very little is what you have learned. When I have come to make great revelations to you, you have rebelled and said, that way of worshiping the Father does not please us. We will remain parked in our practices because the way of worshiping from spirit to spirit to the Father, we have not learned it. But I tell you, times will pass and you will fall asleep and you will not have the luminous awakening that elevates your spirit. Tomorrow you will believe yourself to be orphans of the Father and being so close you will not feel me because you have not learned to feel me. 64. Remember, O oh beloved people, that your Father has spoken to you in all times. In the second time the Divine Master showed you the path of evolution, leaving his footprints imprinted on it so that you would arrive at the true homeland. In this time I have enlightened your spirit. I have prepared you with my word and with my grace so that you get up to work in imitation of Elijah, and thus you can become the guides of humanity. 65. This is the time that I have come to gather and gather together the twelve tribes of the chosen people of Israel, so to receive again the teaching of the Divine Word, which as Master have materialized my teaching among you. With my word I have come to prepare you, to guide you, but this form of communication with you will soon pass. 66. Israel, become the guides of humanity. Give him this bread of eternal life, show him the spiritual work, so that the different religions are spiritualized in my doctrine and thus the kingdom of God is over all men. 67. I come to give you milk and honey, because you are the people who have to fulfill a delicate mission, a mission that will be a heavy cross on your shoulders. You are the people who once again have recognized me and want to get up full of spirituality to show your banner before humanity. 68. I have taught you to live in harmony with me and to be humble and simple in all your actions and thoughts. I have taught you that while man feeds his wars to kill yourself, you must be the soldiers of my divinity, who carry in your hands the weapons of light to combat the hatred and darkness of the world. 69. See, my people, how around you humanity is struggling in its anguish and pain, and you are the ones indicated to bring the comfort, encouragement and love of my divine spirit. 70. Behold, when you have fulfilled in this way, you will feel my peace and of this peace you will share with humanity. Put off all material ambition and put on my love, so that my mercy may be manifested to all. My peace be with you.